Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Wednesday, the day I'd planned on trying to do my 100-mile trip nonstop. I might stop somewhere and show you something if I'm needing to stop. If not, I'm going to continue on. Uh, so wish me luck. I've got, uh, I'm going to wear my helmet. When I feel, when something says wear a helmet, I wear a helmet. I ain't too proud not to. Also, we got my uh, little uh, action cam there. I'm going to put that on top of my helmet. Not done that before. Also got the GoPro down here. Maybe recording with it. I'm not guaranteeing anything. But uh, off I go. I'm going to not record anything until I get the territory you haven't seen yet. I've been to a lot of territory. Hang in here with me. Let's see what this looks like. Well, right up there is exit 141. This would either be the beginning or the ending of the by see, scenic byway that I've showed you lots about. Uh, hot springs, uh, stuff like that. I'm going to show you a little more in a minute. Hopefully this truck don't hit me. And he missed me, so we're good to go. When I stopped here, I wanted to tell you, show you where that is. You're going to, that's the uh, uh, Bliss Hagerman exit, 141. Now then, I wanted to show you this. This is a little bitty town, Bliss. But I wanted to see if we could see these out here. Going to be a zoom. See them windmills? They're everywhere in Idaho now. I don't know how many there are there. The only importance to them all is the first four that was ever put in Idaho, I built the road going into them. Whoopee. But here's the bad thing. I like this idea of having wind power. You notice none of them moving. No wind today, thank God. But the problem with having wind power is the government makes you buy it even if it's cheaper to use the hydro which it was last year but we had to pay the higher premium because of laws on the books that says we got to buy their power first uh, I'm not too keen on that so we bought their power that's the good thing about having uh, power for uh, what do you call it that recyclable power crap the green power cost us more even if we got free hydro we still got to buy that well we're gonna go down this way right behind me now you see that car that's the way we're headed I'm gonna turn on my cameras here see what we can record we got the like I said we got the boat GoPro I'm gonna whip that one on it's still there and I'm gonna whip the one on my handle the helmet on I don't know if any of them will work but we'll give it a try so let's go check out well I don't want to tell you it's a secret I'll tell you later bye
Now, if I remember right, this was pretty cool. And this is what we're going to try to find up there. But in here, they got a bunch of uh, things to look at. This is in the town of Hagerman. It's going to be your first town you come to after you pull off the freeway. So let's go check this thing out and see what we got in here. Well, I just walked in here and look at this guy. Ran right across him. Good looking guy. Another good looking woman coming out of the back. <laughs> He's going to tell us a little bit about this uh, museum. Uh, yes, this is a visitor center in Hagerman, Idaho. Yes, so we are famous here for our fossil beds, which have retained the Hagerman horse, which was found here uh, with many full skeletons, about 200. 20 full skeletons were found here by the Smithsonian. Now this was one complete skeleton you found, or was this pieces? Uh, yes, these were complete this skeletons. This was complete? This is actually a replica since we can't show the actual fossils since they are radioactive. Really? Yes, they, have, they emit radon, which is toxic. You think that's what killed the dinosaurs? No, it's they just... They must have had a, uh, a uh, power plant go bad on them or something. What do you think? No, it's just that <laughs> being preserved in that uh, that area and the sand and all that stuff. It made, made its own. It made it, it made it radioactive. Okay, and what do we have over here then? So, all our fossils are around 3.5 million years old, but Ooh. our youngest one here is our camel. This guy was around 15 to 20 years, uh, I mean, 1.5 to 2 million years old. Wow. I didn't know we had camels in Idaho. Yes, this guy was a North American camel. Do, you, do they did they look like other camels we have now or uh, we believe so that they were just bigger versions of them quite a bit bigger yeah I've never a seen bigger. a real camel I can actually bring you got a, a modern day camel skull for comparison can you yes all right I'll be right back what's that from I don't know what that is, but that looks like an alligator. Probably not. Hey, that's what they did with my old knees. I wonder where they put them. That's a cool game. Here we have the modern day North American camel skull. As you see, it is a bit similar in, si in shape, yeah. but in size, it is quite a bit smaller. Yes, this, this piece here is that piece there. Could you yes. hold that down to there? It's a, it's, maybe this was just a big one. And all, this, all of them that we have found are quite a bit bigger. Yeah. The T size. They, they were look also, different on the eye socket or whatever there. Yes, they had more bigger eye sockets. They had for a bigger skull. They had oh, bigger cool. teeth as well. Huh. Now, now uh, Hegerman is known for, this is one of the biggest uh, finds or something in America? Or? Yes, we found around 220 full skeletons of the Hagerman horse here when Smithsonian came in the 30s and the 20s. And we have recently been finding more and more stuff. We have found a new species of otter, which we still haven't named yet. And uh, Hey, you can name it, uh, name it after, what's your name? Uh, my name's Alex. Alex, I would call it Alex. Alex Otter, Otter, that Alex. sounds good. I didn't get to find it, so <laughs> the person that finds it gets to name it. We also huh. have found a bigger species of fox. Have animal. you gone to the, to the wherever this land is and looked for stuff yourself? No, this is actually a summer job. I am from the high school here. Oh, really? Yes. You're in Hagerman? Yes. For, I'm, I'm Hagerman. wanting to move here. Yes, it's really neat. Yeah, I like it down here. Yes. I mean, I'm kind of guessing that's uh, some kind of elephant. This is a mastodon. Mastodon. These guys were smaller than the mammoths. And another big difference between them is that mammoths were razors, so they so they ate with their teeth and This is grasses. one tooth? Yeah, this is one tooth. Holy smokes. They, they ate grasses, so their teeth were more for grinding and uh -huh. chewing. While these guys were browsers. They ate plants, uh, shrubs, twigs. And this is the top of the tooth? Yes, this is the top of the tooth. And you guys, they found the fossils like this and they made replica, replicas like that. Yes, yeah, so we could show the people. Uh -huh. and, and you got a picture of what we're talking about up there? Not in that So picture, this huh? is an artist's interpretation of what this area was used to like. look like. So we did. I, should, I see we still had uh, hydropower. We got a dam. 
Yes. <laughs> Pretty smart. They got rid of that. They got rid of the, the, the what was that? They killed them all? The radon? No, that, um, that was in the bones that we found. No, it didn't kill them. No, it didn't kill them. What killed them? Uh, we, th this place used to be a giant lake. It was called uh -huh. Lake Idaho. Oh, oh, I think, and then it did a dam break or something, or yes, a landmass, and it flooded. shot down to Salt Lake City or something. Yeah, it flooded. That was the Bonneville. So okay. there were two big lakes around here. So this one, it flooded into the Columbia River, and it took all these animals with it, and it buried it alongside our beds. So that's how we have... And then dried place. it up into the desert we got now, and they, yes. what did live, couldn't live. Yes, we find all these animals around the same time, so we think that these guys were drug into the sand and buried. So now we ha all we have left is this valley and desert formed by that lake. Huh. So, and what foot is this? That is the ma mastodon foot. It's, it's just, it just uh, boggles my mind how this stuff got preserved in sand or something, didn't it? And mud? Yes, and limestone then, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that is so awesome. Another big fellow that we have found here is the giant ground sloth. If you see that bone at the very end, that yes. is the humerus. That is the first bone in your arm. That is the end Like up part in your shoulder? Where? Yes, right here. That is the end part of it. So these guys grew to at least 10 feet tall and they would weigh around a ton. Wow, and what were they again? Giant ground sloths. Ground sloths? Yes. Is that like the, the things that go real slow nowadays? Yes. yes, these guys evolved into them, but they used to be quite Huge. big. Huge. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And this little uh, skull here? That is from a type of horse that we have found here. It is not the Hagerman horse. The Hagerman horse fossils that we have are right here. That's what these, oh, and this is what it looks like when you... Uh, when they were fossilized and when they cast it. Yeah. So these guys did have a similar structure like a zebra. So these guys were quite smaller than a modern day horse. This one horse here we're talking about right here? Yes, the Hagerman horse. Well, he looks, well, I guess that is pretty small for a horse, isn't it? Yes. And here we actually do have a comparison between bones. Oh, okay. Right here is the modern day horse tibia compared to the Hagerman horse tibia. These guys were a bit smaller, but they had similar structures and shape. So we think that now these th guys this is the regular horse. This that is and the this is what the we, Hagerman horse too. Hagerman horse it is a little, quite a bit smaller. Yes. So we actually do think tibia. That, that's the upper part of your leg, right? Yes. Okay. So we actually do. So and that's your knee part there. Yes. Right ah. there. So we actually do think that these guys were the predecessors to modern day horses, uh -huh. since the similar shape, structure, and the amount of how closely related they look to each other. They wow. were also the first one-toed and the oldest one-toed horse that we have found. Is, is this a, is this a... The leg. You found that somewhere in here too? Yes. Wow, that's pretty awesome. And that's a goose. Yes. <laughs> is he pre... He don't look prehistoric. <laughs> no, he don't look prehistoric. <laughs> what, is, what do we got around this corner over here? Uh, this is the kids area. Oh, this is where I should be. And this is, uh, what, what's this represent right here? This represents the different heights in the, in the sand. If you move the sand around, you'll get different topographical lines going on. Ah, that's pretty cool. This is shining down on there. Yes. And, and, and what's these little lines mean? Don't know how much of that we got because I ran out of battery. But this is pretty cool. This is a pretty cool area. Alex was a big help, and I still think they need to name that otter after him. Auditorium. What do we do in the auditorium there? 12 minute film. Is it a 12 minute film? Okay. I might go. Oh. Where, where did you come from? You snuck right in on me there. <laughs> you want to be on YouTube? That's fine, yeah. Good, because that's where, you, that's where you're being. I'll leave, I'll leave my uh, YouTube channel so you guys can check it out. Cool. We got a few hundred videos on there. I'm going to look around in there. I don't know if I'm going to stick around for the auditorium uh, show.
I guess you can come in here and they show you a 12 minute show about this, which I might hang around for, but I'm not going to film it. There that, there's that otter guy. Isn't it Alex the otter? Yeah, Alex the otter. <laughs> Well, Alex, hey, thank you for showing me everything. I might stick around here and watch this video. And uh, once Have again, a nice day. thanks for everything. You're well, now, wasn't that an awesome place? I just talked to the young man in there, Alex, and asked him about going out to where the fossil beds are. I guess you can't see nothing from there. And you got to walk in in a mile on kind of gravelly road. Uh, and I can't walk a mile. So we're not going to look at that, but I hope you enjoyed this part. I'm going to turn on the cams a little bit, and I'll stop where you would turn off to go see the fossil beds. Thanks for watching. Well, we're recording. Well, I just shut off the GoPro and the other camera ran out of battery going down the road, but that ain't important. We are at the Overlook. Uh, I'm going to go walk up there and see what we can see. I'm not going to film anymore from this point on because it's just back down to the road and you've seen plenty of that highway back and forth because we come down here a lot. Lots to look at in Hagerman Valley, so check out this byway. Anyway, let's go check this out, shall we? Sorry about that. This is, uh, I guess, where they found that dang Hagerman horse. We are in Twin Falls County. I don't know why they named him Hagerman horse. But I guess they found it first. Now, when I was a young man... We came down here and rode our motorcycles all over this land. We didn't know there was fossils here. Uh, back in there, where part is, parts of it anyway. They've been looking at it since 1929. We were riding our bikes down here in the 70s, all around. Probably was already fenced off. Cause I didn't remember nothing about this. But that didn't surprise me any. I don't remember a lot about a lot. Let's go walk up here and 
See what we got. I couldn't get off of this if I wanted to. All right. What that kid was talking about was uh, this was all underwater called Idaho Lake Lake Idaho there's a picture you saw down there at the uh, visitor center and this is where we found they found some fossils somewhere I guess it's back in there a ways you got to walk in there that ain't happening but this is part of the Snake River right here Nice little inlet there. I wouldn't mind having a house down there. I'm sure they'd love me to be able to do that. Uh, but this is the area. Somewhere in there they found the fossils. Maybe up a little further. But they said you can't get to it anyway without walking like I mentioned. So I'm, I can't do it now. But uh, I gave you plenty of information if you're coming through here so you can. So check it out. It, it's really cool, especially the visitor centers. Now these rocks, we found some land with lots of those rocks on them for sale. That's perfect for me. I don't want a yard. I'd rather have a, uh, a yard full of rocks so I don't have to mow. Because we're wanting to move down in this area, and then we may. So that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know how long it's going to be. I'm going to try to speed up some of that road stuff, but it's kind of important to leave the road stuff in if I'm trying to show people where to go. But I've done about 80 miles or so, feeling pretty good. Of course, I didn't do it all in a row. I stopped and looked at stuff. So I did 40 miles straight, no problem. I think we're ready to do 150 miles pretty soon. Uh, let's see, about 150, yeah, about 180 round trip. Thinking about going up to a little town called Mountain Home. Just looking up there. Just really going up there, looking at a new truck. Mine's broke down again, and I am really tired of that. Nine times on the air conditioner. Now we figured out the leak is under the dash, which is a seven-hour job just to get in there. And then the alternator went out last night or something. We can't even figure that one out. Oh boy, uh, I'd like to have a new truck. Anyway, hey, you all have a good day. Subscribe. How's that for putting 100 miles on your bike? Pretty close, 101 miles. Hey, not bad. Next trip's going to be a lot longer. See you when we get back.